Hi, here's an interesting question for you. Can you actually use your LCR meter to measure capacitors in circuit? Because if you could, that'd be really handy, right? You can know like all these uh, electrolytic uh, caps and things, you can go in there and you'd be able to test them in circuit to troubleshooting a PCB. Because everyone knows one of the major failure modes for products, if you've seen a lot of my repair videos, a lot of them, especially like, you know, TV repairs or something like that, it'll just be like a, a blown cap in the power supply, a blown wet electrolytic uh, capacitor. And not all of them can be identified with like, you know, it's burst out, it's leaking or whatever, leaking capacitors. You have to actually uh, test them. Is the capacitance good? Is the ESR or equipment? equivalent series resistance good? Well, can you actually measure them in circuit? And the answer is, surprisingly, yes, you can do a pretty decent job of it. But as always, there's traps for young players. Let's take a look at it. Right, so let's just try and measure a capacitor in circuit. I've got my uh, LCR meter here. It's just set to auto uh, mode, so it'll determine whether it's capacitor, inductor, resistive, whatever it is. Uh, measuring at uh, one kilohertz, that's a fairly nominal uh, test frequency. And let's measure this big bad boy here, shall we? What do we get? Will it auto detect it? Oh, oh, resistance. Oh, it's one, it's one ohm. It's one ohm. Oh, we've come a gutter. Well, let's actually force it into capacitance mode and try it again. There we go. That's more like it. Look at that. A thousand mic. And what is the value of this capacitor? Sure enough, it's a thousand mic. We measured that in circuit. No worries whatsoever. It's practically bang on. And we can measure the equivalent series resistance of that capacitor as well, because that's very important for high frequency ripple applications. You can come a gutter that way. So let's put in ESR mode here. Now uh, you measure that at 100 kilohertz, if your meter can do 100 kilohertz, because that's the uh, general industry specification for ESR. Whoop. There we go, ESR mode. So we have to short the leads together, because these are like really long. So I'm going to null that out there. And unfortunately, it looks like I can't null out in ESR mode on this Agilent meter. Anyway, let's 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 call that an ohm. So so we'll now measure that in circuit. There you go, 1.2 ohms, something like that. So we're talking under 0.2 ohms. Um, that sounds pretty good for a thousand mic uh, cap ESR. We'll compare, I'll whack up a data sheet here for a Rubicon, um, which is the brand of this one. And that's probably going to be very close. Let's try another popular um, LCR meter. This is the DE5000. This is IET one, but uh, you can get these for about a hundred bucks. They're pretty darn good bang per buck. Let's give this one a go. Can it do it? Ah, uh, nope. <laughs> it's come a gutter. But if you put that on manual range, there it is. Well, just, uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty close to a thousand mic there. Uh, 0.91 ohms there. So that's not too far off the other meter, but we did have to manual range it. So at one kilohertz there, we measure pretty much bang on to a thousand microfarads. Let's change the frequency. At 10 kilohertz, huh, six, uh, 700 nanofarads. What? 100 kilohertz, 1600 nanofarads. And at 100 hertz, we're actually up to 1200 microfarads. Hmm, what's going on? So what does this actually measure if we desolder it uh, from the circuit without any of the other uh, components actually affecting it? Well, it's actually uh, 855 microfarads at 100 hertz and 120 hertz. It's not going to be much different because that's the same frequency. One kilohertz, 820. And at 10 kilohertz, it's basically measuring, well, that's not actually open. That's like basically short. That's what happens when you short circuit a, on a capacitance uh, meter. It measures OL like that. Otherwise, it'd be measuring like picofarads if it was actually open. And at 100 kilohertz, 1700 nanofarads. So it's all over the shop. Now, of course, this is a very large value cap, 1000 microfarads. So um, one of the things that you're supposed to know when you're using LCR uh, meters like this is that for large value capacitance, capacitors like this, you're supposed to use the lower frequency, like 100 hertz, 120 hertz, and that really gives us our capacitance value. So if you were to give me this cap and say measure it, right, I'd put it on the, 100, the lowest frequency uh, mode, 100 hertz, and that will give us uh, the greatest resolution, um, and we'll, as we'll talk about uh, different range resistors in a minute, um, but yeah, that's going to give us the best value. And the ESR, 1.3 ohms, so basically our ESR was pretty much uh, bang on to where we were, were before, of course, we have to subtract the 1 ohm of the uh, leads here, so, you know, we did a fairly good job measuring the ESR of that capacitor. 
in circuit. And we'll repeat the same measurement on the other LCR meter using the proper uh, short lead measurement interface like this. So, you know, this is going to be, this is going to be the real deal. At 100 hertz there, 848. 120 hertz, 843, basically the same. And at one kilohertz, as you can see, we've lost some resolution here. Um, so it's not as good, 761 microfarads. And at 10 kilohertz, it's going, nope, that is too big a capacitor. I can't measure that, thank you very much. And it's gonna tell us the same at 100 kilohertz as well. Hi, brief whiteboard interlude. I actually um, started shooting how an LCR meter works and I ended up like shooting 20 minutes worth of footage. So uh, yeah, that was just made this video too long. So at insert at this point, I would say go watch that previous video which I've already released on how LCR meters work and it explains everything I'm gonna be talking about later on in this video. So you definitely should watch this. Link it down below and up there. So if we actually go back to this board and measure uh, what's actually on the board after we remove the cap, we can see, uh, well, at least the parameters of what uh, we had actually in circuit surrounding that capacitor and I don't know I haven't like traced this out or anything I've got no idea uh, what it's doing what it's uh, bulk for obviously it's a bulk cap for you know some sort of uh, supply or something like that but if we probe that we can see well, it's, it thought it was uh, one microfarad or something. Now it's 4.8 ohms at one kilohertz. So that's a, you know, it's fairly low impedance around there. Now at 100 kilohertz, it thinks it's an inductor. That is low impedance. So that's why, actually, uh, you know, we had a little bit of trouble uh, with different meters actually measuring such a large value cap, and you could only do it at low frequencies. So let's measure this cap in circuit, 470 microfarads. Um, it look, looks like it's the same type and everything, so let's measure that at 100 hertz in uh, fixed capacitance mode and 422 microfarads, so we can actually measure that in circuit. But one of the um, extra tricks of measuring uh, in circuit is that you know, not only uh, to manually um, select the capacitance mode or the inductance mode if you're measuring inductors, but also swap the leads like that and aha, uh -huh, well, Oh, there we go. It still might have some residual charge in there. You might have to leave it, but if you swap the polarity, you can get extra in-circuit parameters that can actually change depending upon uh, the polarity that you've got there. And you can see that's only 690 nanofarads. And there we go. Let's put it in that direction. You saw that it was 690 nanofarads before. It was nanofarads. So now we had to actually, like, clear that and do it again. Oh, oh, I thought it was nano, nano, nano. Nope, 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 <laughs> 690 nanofarads, what's going on, right? It's plain silly buggers, it really doesn't like that at all. So we'll range this deliberately to microfarads like this, so it's not going to get confused at all. I have 420 microfarads, and we can measure it that way as well. But you can see how if you let the uh, meters auto range, well, you can really come a gutter. And it turns out, uh, for most large value uh, capacitors, we can actually go around in circuit and actually measure them. Here's another 1000 mic jobby. There it is there, 1100, no wackers. There you go, 979. We can do 10 microfarads, there it is there, it's practically bang on. Here's 100 microfarads down here. See, we can actually get reasonably close, and I've tried this on dozens of different boards and hundreds of different types of caps in various circuits. I've got a whole bunch of them up there. And it generally just works pretty fine. But then you do again eventually get ones that are so low impedance around them that, well, you can't measure diddly squat because it's basically a short circuit. If you measure resistance like that, there we go, like 33 ohms. It's just like way too low impedance. Whatever is around that uh, cap there, it's like on the output of this uh, little transformer thing here. Like, who knows what's going on there? But, you know, there are some that you can't measure, but a good lot of caps in circuit, you can actually measure not too badly at all and measure the uh, ESR as well. But of course, capacitors in circuit actually have active components usually around them. They could be voltage regulators, they can be, uh, like I mentioned before, a, this could be like the reset pin of a micro or something. You might have some like RC, um, you know, startup thing, you know, something like this or something like that. And you want to measure that cap in circuit to see if it's uh, still any good or gone bust and stuff like that. And uh, inside the chip, you can have ESD 
protection diodes like this and you can have active parts so effectively you've got like a diode and the power supply can act as a short circuit uh, at a frequency like really low impedance so effectively you can have like one or two diodes in parallel with the capacitor that you're trying to measure and well if you've got too high a test voltage that's going to clip it Let's go to the scope. So you should actually test this for your LCR meter. You should really get to know the output signal levels of your LCR meter here. So let's just do uh, the Agilent jobby here. I've got my uh, capacitance substitution box here and across it, I've actually got two parallel diodes like that to simulate um, some active circuitry that you might get on a PCB. So I've got it uh, disconnected here and you can see that we're getting like a, a selected 100 hertz there and we're getting two volts peak to peak. And of course, um, it, that is more than enough to uh, clamp on these uh, two silicon back-to-back -back diodes. And at the moment, it th thinks it's uh, 15 nanofarads because I've got it going into the uh, scope and everything. But don't worry about that. Okay, let's plug it in. And you can see that our signal levels dropped. If you can see though, it has not clipped. It's still a sine wave. So it's actually dropped to uh, about 220 millivolts peak to peak, which is not enough to clip uh, these. I've got a hundred mic, uh, sorry, a 10 microfarad capacitor in there. So with the 10 microfarad capacitor at 100 hertz, uh, with the particular range resistor that uh, the LCR meter has uh, chosen, the signal level is not enough to actually turn on any active devices in circuit. So if we're actually trying to measure a 10 microfarad cap in circuit, we're not going to be switching on at least any active elements. And that helps a lot with in-circuit measurements. And you'll notice that this is the same 150, 220 mic. I can go up the highest one I've got to 1,000 mic. There you go. We're down in the noise. We're getting some common mode noise on there because we're using a single-ended um, uh, scope here. And let's see if we can get this to clamp, right? At... Well, there we go. It's starting to distort a little bit. So at one volt uh, peak to peak there, you can see, and that's at uh, 15 microfarads. So if we go down to 10, you can see it starts to get a little bit distorted. And now as we go down, I'm now at one microfarad. We're trying to measure a one microfarad cap and you can see that it is clamped. And I'm down to 100 nanofarads there now. We've got absolutely no chance of measuring, in this particular case, a 100 nanofarad cap using this particular range resistor in circuit that has active um, diodes and other, you know, elements, active silicon elements in them. We've just got no chance of measuring that accurately. But large values of caps, yeah, because it drops all the way down. But you can't just like increase the frequency to do this because it actually gets worse, as I said, because of the large capacitance value. And you'll see, our, it, well, 120 hertz, you might have saw it drop a little bit at one kilohertz. Yep. <laughs> Look at our signal level now. It's tiny tot. It's absolutely tiny tot. We're getting the common mode noise and everything, right? Pretty horrible stuff. And at uh, 10 kilohertz, forget it. Because what you're doing is trying to measure a large value of capacitance at a large frequency and you can't do that because it's your signal level is going to be too low even for any range resistor you try and select in there doesn't matter but at 100 hertz of course um we can measure there, there's 220 microfarads i'm measuring that no problems whatsoever 33 microfarads you know it's measuring 28 because this is these aren't exact values right but we're measuring that in circuit with those diodes across it it's only once we get to those low values or we can go down even lower I'm now in the nanofarad range. That's 1.5 nanofarads. And you can see that all of the, you know, that's 10 picofarads, right? We, we just cannot measure that, okay? Because the <laughs> based on the frequency that we're using, the uh, low and the low value capacitance, the, imp the reactance, that impedance is very high and doesn't matter what range resistor we use, we just can't do it. It's only those large value caps. So coincidentally though, the, the caps you usually want to measure in circuit are like your large value electrolytics. And you can actually do it. It works fairly well. And I've repeated this with other LCR meters. And uh, yeah, pretty much um, all the ones that I've tested, they were able to give you a low enough uh, signal level that actually doesn't clip. And you can experiment with your own LCR meter and some caps. And in this case, it starts clipping about oh, 15 microfarads. Let's call it 10 microfarads at 100 
hertz. Even though it's clipping, it can, can actually still measure them. I'm going in 2.2 microfarads. Now it starts to get a bit off, right? It can't measure it anymore. One microfarad, right? And it's measuring 7.2. It just, nah, nah, it just can't do it. And right down at 100 nanofarads, it's showing 16 microfarads, right? It's completely off. But anything above 10 microfarads, yeah, no worries. It can measure that in circuit with other active elements in there. But that doesn't mean you won't get other, you know, low impedance stuff uh, like, you know, transformers or other um, things which act as uh, low impedances. And then that can ruin your day. But yeah, it actually works pretty well. And for this particular um, LCR meter, if I manually range it, there's really not many spots where it actually hits the sweet spot of being able to measure. There we go. It can measure like this is 15 nanofarads here, measuring 15.8 there, but you can see that the waveform's a little bit distorted. Um, yeah, it's not it's not good and it's overranged at that point where the actual signal level is low enough not to clip. And you'll see that uh, we've got a clip waveform here, 470 picofarads, it's way off. And if we actually range it there, you can see how it's different with the different ranges. And if we go down to the picofarad range, yeah, we can get values like uh, 6.8 nanofarads that don't clip, but they're well over range that um, it can't measure them on that range. But as I said, it works remarkably well for the high value uh, caps, in this particular case, over 10 microfarads. But every LCR meter is gonna be different depending on the range resistors and whatnot. So you've got to really test your own LCR meter to see what its limits are. And this IET meter, um, it goes down to like one microfarad dart before it starts to clip there. But anything above that, it's going to be super duper accurate in circuit. It just, it, the signal level's low enough for it not to clip. That's 150 mic, and there it is. Even though our signal level is very small, so I we'll have to gain that up. But of course, it, it does that internally. So if I actually remove the diode here, this is 100 uh, microfarads, and you'll see it has no impact at all on the measurement. It's not doing anything because it's not really conducting. But now let's actually put a resistor in parallel and see what that does. Actually, I'll have to use this resistance box because this one only does uh, high values in fixed and variable I won't know what I've got. So anyway, so there it is, right? So there's, there's a 100 microfarad capacitor. It's reading a bit low, okay, no worries. And if we disconnect the oscilloscope, that actually doesn't make any difference. So that's really essentially no load on there, as you'd expect. Actually, let's change that frequency back to 100 hertz there. Okay, so let's now put a 100K resistor in parallel with that. You can see it makes no difference whatsoever. Let's go to 10K, makes no difference whatsoever. Let's go down to 1K, makes no difference whatsoever. <laughs> let's go down to 100 ohms. Okay, it's starting to make a little bit of a difference. Let's go down to 10 ohms, okay? And yeah, 10 ohms, we start to have a problem in circuit. But that's 10 ohms is like really low impedance um, stuff. You saw in, uh, previously we measured like 30 ohms and stuff like that. Um, so it was obviously able to handle that. So why does a parallel impedance, if it's a pure resistor, make no really no difference unless it's so low that it actually kills the amplitude down like this, okay? Um, because, uh, which is a function of the, uh, it's gonna be a function of uh, with the range you're choosing, the range resistor in there in combination with this. It's because it's a pure resistor. Just, just like we talked about on the whiteboard in the other video, it's just effectively a uh, parallel resistance across the capacitance. It doesn't really, because it's a pure resistor, it doesn't change the phase angle at all. And because uh, there's not much else uh, series resistance in there to actually get a voltage divider um, type thing, the the source from the LCR meter is able to actually drive that capacitance. It doesn't, you can have, you know, look, 100 ohms in parallel and still measuring exactly the same as 1K or anything else. And you might think 100 ohms, no way it's going to measure that. But yep, whack it in parallel. And that's why you can effectively measure like high value capacitors at a low frequency, like 100 hertz, in, in circuit relatively easily it actually works fairly well so unless you've got like the waveform clipping or a really uh low impedance like you know tens of ohms or something like that once again every lcr meter is, is going to be slightly different depending on what uh range resistor you've got in there which is effectively the source impedance of your uh voltage uh source inside here your ac voltage source but yeah it's actually going to do a pretty decent job for large value caps so try it with your lcr meter and see what it's like i've tried several lcr 
PR meters here, the ones that I've got, and they all, you know, work in a similar um, sort of way for measuring high value caps. It's like, it's rather surprising. And I thought going into this video that I would actually find more of examples of in circuit where it actually clips, but I just couldn't find them. And this is why some LCR meters like this uh, Global Specialties LCR 58 here, they have different voltage test levels. There it is there. See, 0.5 volts RMS, of course, that's RMS. So that is, will actually turn on diodes, but we can actually switch that to a 0.1 volt RMS, so 100 millivolt test signal. And the reason, the specific reason that they have this functionality is so that um, diodes in circuit, any active elements inside chips, inside regulators or whatever, um, any active elements at all, bridge rectifiers, whatever it is, um, this won't turn them on. But here's the funny thing. This video was originally not supposed to be a whiteboard tutorial on how LCR meters work. It was supposed to show you this exact thing where you can get in circuit things that screw up, active elements that screw up your in circuit capacitance measurements. And I thought I'd be able to find really good examples, but I've tried hundreds of capacitors across like dozens of different boards and I can't actually find one example, bloody Murphy's Law, could not find one example where the voltage actually made a difference for large value capacitors. I can only get it to do it on the box if I use like lower value caps, but all large value electrolytics that I measured in all sorts of different boards, I couldn't get it to do it. But anyway, LCR meters, some do actually have a specific low voltage mode specifically to avoid uh, active elements. So there you go, I hope you found that video interesting, even if it wasn't the video I originally intended uh, to make, and I did waffle on the whiteboard there, but hopefully you now get a good understanding of how LCR meters work, and some tips that you can use for measuring in-circuit uh, capacitors. Make sure you manually set the function, the capacitance or the inductance that you uh, want to do, uh, so that you don't confuse the uh, auto-ranging algorithm, or the auto-selection uh, algorithm in there, and for large values of capacitors, which is typically what you want to use in circuit, you measure them at uh, the lowest frequency possible, 100 hertz or 120 hertz. And then also, um, don't forget to swap your probes around as well, just to uh, make sure that you're getting the same reading in both directions. And then you can, or at least similar reading in both directions, then you can be more confident uh, that you're actually measuring an accurate capacitance value in circuit. And then, of course, if you're measuring the uh, ESR, measure it at 100 uh, kilohertz. You wanna measure that at high frequency. And generally, that works pretty well um, in circuit, but just compensate for your test lead resistance because these long, thin leads like this, they'll have like an ohm or something like that. And and yeah, you want to take that out if you're measuring uh, ESR. And then get to know your LCR meter by measuring its signal level. And if you are measuring uh, in circuit and your uh, LCR meter does actually have the ability uh, to set the voltage level, then you definitely want to set it on the lower level, even though I could not find a single silly example um, of this thing. If I do, I'll, I'll celebrate and whack the video on the second channel. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did and found it useful, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.